Accessories are known to the ladies and the craft, but Wenger did not debunk that school of thought to create the powerhouse behind Art Smith Collections, a boarding accessories label based in Lagos, Nigeria. He is a graduate of philosophy from Ekiti State University and a fashion journalist. Since 2008, when Art Smith Collection was birthed, Wenger's exports have earned and received glowing accolades and critical acclaim from different quarters. Oxford jewelry pieces have been rocked by personalities like Fumi Ajila Ladipo, Sumbo Ajaba Adere, Lizye Mocha, or Maomi, to mention a few, and they have been sported in publications like Web Magazine and Great Velvet's 2013 collections. Benga is driven by passion to succeed against impossibilities and to inspire people for success in life. Okay, welcome back to the program. And yes, my next guest on the show today is an accessory designer. Now, um, when I met him, when I initially when I met him, I asked him if it was only leke, or because it, it works with beads basically. So I felt um, it's ileke, right? And he had a whole lot to say. He said, "I need to school you. This is not ileke. This is." So I think it would just do that better on set here today. And I'd like to introduce to you an accessory maker. His name is Gwenga Dada. Gwenga, welcome on the program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Gwenga Onileke, how are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm not Onileke. Okay, so, okay, so what do you call your art? You work with the beats? Yeah, I'm an accessory designer, basically, because I don't just work with beats. I work with different elements, so it's not just beats. And then for future reference, just like uh, most makeup artists are moving from being called this, this and that makeovers, they are going to this and that beauty, meaning that they're not just about makeup. They are looking at the future. They'll begin to... Uh, you know, manufacture the makeup products. So, I'm thinking of that to so have that in mind. You know, I'm getting to the point where I'll be making accessories with even diamonds. So, if I pigeon myself and say I'm an only like a, a okay. bead maker now, you okay. know, it's going to affect me in the future. So, I'm ready for the future. So that's why you are. Yes, I'm just an accessory an designer. Accessory, accessory designer. You don't think accessory accessory is kind of broad yes it's brother so so you're going everywhere every yeah. you're touching on everything yes yeah, so i have um, plans uh, very soon to launch a collection of uh, fashion belts for women wow so, wow, wow, wow 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 you have a whole lot Let, let's start let's start with the beads okay let's start with the beads then you mentioned diamond i think yeah. I, i'm interested in diamond uh, <laughs> then we'll, <laughs> we'll move, move on so start starting out um art smith yeah that's what i basically call you yeah how why did you start out as a, a bead maker Okay, uh, an accessory designer. designer. <laughs> okay, uh, it was during the time when I was taking admission into the university, and we all know the Nigerian situation. You know, it's always difficult to gain admission into the university. It's not all about you having good grades and all that. You need connection. So, okay. well, the connection wasn't uh, looking hopeful, and then the admission wasn't looking hopeful. And I'm the kind of restless person. I can't sit still for a very long time. That's why I hate road trips. You know, okay. it's always difficult for me to sit still doing nothing. So I found something doing, I initially I wanted to go into embellishing dresses because my sister is a fashion designer. So okay. I wanted to go to uh, embellishing uh, dresses with stones, either precious, either plastic, whatever. I just wanted to beautify things. So I met this uh, church member of mine, her name is Mrs. Oyejobi. She makes beads and she does other things, beads, bags, arts, and all that. So I walked up to her, okay, uh, I think you can use beads to teach me how to embellish clothes. So that's why when and therefore but uh, along the line i saw at the time making beats and there was this intricate design it's called smoke design or something like that. i know it really does look like smoke you know like billowing smokes and and, and it's made with beads you said yes make, made with beads so I, you know i was really interested in the design and i couldn't concentrate on the bead embellishment class and you know after the class uh, she's my age mate i went to meet her okay olamde can you take me this and she taught me and I don't know, as fate would have it, I started creating my own designs. Design. You know, I'm the kind of person that I don't like being a copycat, okay. you understand? Even though I'm a copycat in some sense, you know, when customers come and they bring you a picture, I want uh, this something exactly, like this. yes. Okay. Okay. But I found myself doing more than just doing what others want. I, you I started, added your own touch too. Yeah, I added my own touch. So wow. I started so, working with chains, so it's not just about beats and all that. I started working what, with chains. When exactly did you start? Uh, that was 2007. 
That's that awesome. professionally when I started training, but uh, my life, uh, my interest in uh, accessory designing dates back to like 2005. Yes, well, 2005. You, started, you started out professionally in 2007. Yes, 2007. When I started to go to the, uh, when I started to go for the course. Wow, wow. Now, starting out in 2007, you're a guy. Yeah. Uh, or oh, you're a man. Yeah. As it were. <laughs> now, Mr. Wenga Yes. The accessory, accessory designer. designer. I mean, were you not uncomfortable with the idea that um, this kind of business is run by ladies and ladies use this stuff yeah and so were not you uh, uncomfortable because it's not in quotes now africa we yeah. africa <laughs> it's not manly as it were or do yeah. you think it's manly I don't What's your opinion? well uh, uh, i wouldn't say it's manly really there's no profession made for a particular gender just like uh, in the past, it was seen as uh, strictly a woman's job for uh, people to go into modeling. I'm talking about Nigeria now. Okay. But now we have more men going into modeling, you know. So I, there's no profession. It's just, it's just a mentality that, you know, pulls people back, it, uh, restrains them from achieving their purpose and, you know, doing what they really want to do because so, so, so they're no, like, no, okay, no, this... No, no one, no one uh, made fun of the fact that you... Of course they did. It's just like uh, someone having interest in nursing and is saying, oh, because most nurses are women, uh, it's not yes, going into yes, it. Yes, you know, yes, yes, it's, yes. It's really, uh, I'm sorry to say, I, I'm trying not to use the word I want to use, you it, know, it's really... A cake. Let, let it's a cake. Okay, okay, maybe I should use that a cake, though okay. that wasn't what I was going to use. You know, it's... Uh, uh, it's a backward mentality really mm. to think this particular profession is made for this part particular agenda it shouldn't be so, so so as a man now going into accessory designs yeah i mean what advantage has that been is has it been to any advantage to for you has it been of any advantage uh, well yes it has okay. it has because uh most brides will come to me they're like oh you know, and this, especially the Yoruba ones, they say it in Yoruba that ah, that there's a thing with uh, men wanting to uh, female dominated uh, fields, you know, they tend to do it better than the women who are there. Like, that's why we have so many air stylists. I've been to so many fashion weeks, and you know, go to the backstage, you see, in fact, uh, about let me let me be moderate 90 percent of the air stylists are men wow you understand because that's so much that's the amount of confidence that is being put into men in female dominated fields so they tend to put a lot of confidence in me that oh they believe that me being a guy i do it better and then they believe that guys are more meticulous than women okay they say women are petty women are not patient not patient you know when they're telling them oh i don't want it like this i don't want it like that if they do it one or two times women they, tend to play, play up, up, but they yeah. believe that uh, men have a better temperament than women, so they can work better with men. So, so, um, so far, you're working with bids. Yeah. Uh, you're moving to, is it diamonds now? You, okay, you said diamonds. Uh, first things first, you, I'm you, moving you into touch, leather. <laughs> okay, okay, you're moving into leather. Let me hear yeah, about that. I'm moving into leather. Uh, well, I'm very soon, but I'm going to uh, concentrate on uh, the beats now, okay. you know, uh, using Swarovski crystals, using um, coral, using pearl. Okay, and we have uh, different, different types of beats. Yes, they are. Okay. You know, can, they can are you, great. Different shapes. Me and, <laughs> educate me. Different shapes and uh, sizes, just like we have plastic beads. That's why I have a problem with introducing myself as a beaded jewelry, jewelry designer in Nigeria. Because mm -hmm. when you tell them that they instantly think of uh, the run of the mill artisans by the road, I'm not trying to run anybody down. They instantly think it's about that you know people who work with plastic beads those who make this small colored uh beaded bracelets and all now, that what, you know? what you're saying really true we're talking about um you not wanting to be referred to as a bead maker yeah. because it limits the scope of what people think you can do you were saying yeah something. okay it's just for example i'm also a fashion writer i'm really a fashion journalist but when people think of journalists they think of a uh, hungry people Okay. Hungry people will go around scavenging for news, cheap news, and you know it, it's it's really a it's it's really a very uh, notable profession mm. to be called a journalist. But people see it as people dressed in slouchy t-shirts and uh, ragged rugged jeans and okay. all that. But when you say you are a writer, they think to look unless see. Okay. You understand? They yes, think Wally Ch Shane. Ch Chimamanda, they yeah. think Chimamanda, yes, exactly. Yes, you know, yes. so that's the that's the difference really. There's it's just a thin line, but you know, there's a difference. So that's why I won't say I'm a bead maker, I'm a bead jewelry designer. You okay. understand? Because of the ninja mentality, people think oh works with they, they limit the scope. Yeah, exactly. Of, mm. They think oh those um, bead makers in some drones in cramped spaces working day and night, you know. So, 
so you, you you're about telling me about um, the different um, kind of uh, beads we have yeah you were saying there was this there's crystal there's Swarovski crystals no no, no start w what did you call it Swarovski crystals okay w which one is that uh well Swarovski crystals is uh, in the higher grade of the regular crystals that we get in the market you know they are in different grades and sizes and and just like we have um let me see let me see let me see just like we have four leather and we have the authentic leather oh, you understand okay, so okay, they are different okay, grades you okay. get it so you can't uh, say a leather jacket by mark jacobs and you think it's the same one you saw at balogo markets no <laughs> okay, okay, no sure. so that's the difference so uh, now uh, nowadays i find myself working more with the uh, high grade uh, materials, not the regular ones people are used to. So when they see it, they say that yes, this is original pearl, this is original Swarovski crystals, and you know, uh, okay. it, it gives my work prestige. It gives it a class. Yes, it gives it, it gives class. It the subscription that I desire for it. To okay, get. okay. Just, just, just to um, talk about this class, I would like you to mention your clientele, those you've worked with, those who have modeled for you, for example, okay. or those those who've worn your. Um, Accessory. Okay, uh, for example, uh, Mrs. Sumba Jabado, yeah, she wore uh, my jewelry for a traditional wedding, and you know, that's really a lot okay, for me. Okay, okay, and okay. then we have Banke Mishida Lawao, we have uh, Maumi, she wore it for a stage performance, then uh, Grey Velvet Boutique. Uh, the models wore it for their last lookbook, their 2013 uh, catalog. Wow. So if you get the 2013 catalog, you see some of my pieces. Wow. Though uh, my pieces are not being stocked in the store, but it, my pieces were used for um, the lookbook okay. for the shoes. Now, now let's let's just uh, move away from that just a little bit. If, for example, someone wants your, your jewelry, how, how would I how would I get your jewelry? And f since you said it, they're not stocked in shops. Yeah. So how how would I get it? Uh, how, well, how would... they're not stuck. No, in grey velvet store. Oh, they're not okay. Stuck. And that's part of the uh, capacity building efforts that I'm doing now. You know, uh, making it easily available to people. You know, they can access it is easily without having to call me on phone or anything. Ooh. So, I'm thinking of sto um, getting them stocked on in online stores wow. and then in boutiques. Be, 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 be. You know, I have I discovered that I have a lot of people. Uh, calling me from the island that they want to get my visa. Some of them they're about going for a party and they need it desperately, so mm -hmm. they have to call me. So I'm uh, trying to, you know, make it available in some stores. So you, you were talking about moving from from the art of bead bead making yeah. or bead designs yeah. <laughs> to to leather designs. Yeah. What, what world is that? What would we call the world of leather, leather design? And yeah. what exactly are you designing? What exactly are you doing with the leather? Yeah, I'm starting out with fashion belts for women. Oh. Yeah, so um, with leather, that's why I said I'm an accessory designer, really. Yeah. You know, it's all encompassing, not uh, you not calling myself a jeweler. When they think jewelry, you just think of bracelet, necklace, earrings, and all that. But I'm more than that, so I'm an accessory designer. Tomorrow, I may be designing shoes. Tomorrow, I may be designing... I even design clothes. I design what I wear. I design this. Wow. I, I designed it within cool. three hours. It was made within three hours, wow, you know. Cool. I love to I, I love to distinguish myself, you know. So I'm going into so many things. So oh, yeah. I'm starting out with accessories. So tomorrow I will become a fashion designer. Okay. So so um, if if we're looking at your art, the art of um, bead making in yeah. Nigeria, um, and people were using beads, how would you grade it? Okay. Um, how would I grade it? Well, <sighs> we have uh, so many people who are really downgrading the uh what of beats in the in the markets right now that's why i try as much as possible to make sure that my designs are unique mm -hmm. so when you see them you know that this is signature art smith mm -hmm. it's not something made in the market because but, but how, how would you grade the, the general market the general market for example the, the market generally yeah yeah it's booming it's booming. It's booming. So yes. more, more Nigerian youths who are yet to get admission into the university <laughs> can just move and um into the into the bead market yes it, because it's really booming you know everyone wants to wear beads everyone especially the nigerian woman they like variety mm. the nigerian woman likes variety you know so they just they just don't want um, boring and um, gold designs you get it and the thing is that gold necklaces are very expensive so if you want variety you have to buy a lot of it and that means you have to have a lot of money so you're saying you're saying beads are not expensive no they're not they're not as expensive as gold and they have they come in uh, different grades you understand okay. so there's something for everyone really so you know you can go into the market it's something for everyone if you're talking about a range is, is there a price range for 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 um materials made i mean 
accessories yeah. made from um, what's it called bead as beads. Well. well, in the common market, those made with plastic beads, okay. but those don't last. <laughs> so okay. that's what makes me different from other bead makers. Those made with uh, those made with plastic beads, they go for like one thousand, even as low well as five hundred. Okay. Is that ridiculous? Okay. So everyone can wear beads. Really. Okay, and and if we go in, if we go in, I like it can be w what amount? As expensive as, as expensive as uh, one millionaire. Just for beads? Yes. What, you know, especially no, 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 those... Uh, especially diamond. Is it, is it the one diamond encrusted now you were talking no, about? No, not necessarily diamond encrusted. We have um, beads made with uh, 24 karat gold accents. Wow. You know, so those ones, of course, they can't come cheap. Wow. Talking about designs. And you were trying to say um, they could go for as high as one million naira yeah. gold yeah. and bordries. Uh, if I want to go into bead making, if someone wants to go into bead making, don't let me use myself as an example. What do you need to start up? The passion. Because if you don't start out with passion, I'm telling you, you'll be burnt out before uh, you even complete the uh, training. That's why so many people begin the journey, but they never end up because it takes a lot of passion. You stay longer stringing. The uh, layers may not, you know, come out as you want to, right. but you have to start all over again, you know. So it takes passion to keep you going. Pa passion is the fuel that keeps you going, mm. because without passion, I'm telling you, it just like I said, you burn out. Mm. So when you started, you started out just with passion. Yes, I did. And like, how much to start up? If if I want to start up, or anybody wants to start up, it, it costs how much? Because you have to buy the materials. Yeah. You have to buy the materials and the clientele. So you need to you need to like build up. You just said passion. How much would it take to start up, for example? Then how would uh, a boarding uh, accessory designer get the clientele? Oh, uh, how much to start with? I'm not going to give a specific amount because everyone has a uh, different style. Like I, I have different packages. I don't just give you the fee. Okay, this is the amount you're paying for all the training for okay. the you know complete package i and uh, you know divided into, into beginners intermediates and advanced okay but some so, people, so they just gen generally what what, what we together. have so you, you know take different, like strokes of different folks i can't i can't give a particular amount e because i could shoot myself in the leg okay, and, okay. <laughs> i could be spoiling someone's uh, someone else's okay, market you know okay. someone else could say oh it's one fifty thousand. Mm. you understand and you know just it, to learn I, I thought it was going to be cheap you know well it's, oh, oh, it's it's that cheap yeah, it's, it's one fifty cheap, and you know it shouldn't come cheap mm, because indeed. this is what you would. Uh, it, it, it's like it's like teaching someone how to fish. You mm. understand? When you learn how to fish, it doesn't stop there. You you keep investing and then keep selling, and you care. even you end up paying. You, you you end up earning more than you even paid to learn and the art. At the end of the day, so how do you build? How did you build build your clientele? Because because you the names you were calling are uh, actually <laughs> not just any other every everyday person. Okay, they're celebrities. So I, I would like to know how did you build how your did clientele? I build my clientele. Well, I have sisters, I have cousins, female cousins, and you no, know, and the world my joy when I started out. And wait, uh, were you giving it to your cousins free? Uh, well, no, I was. I'm okay. a businessman, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I won't I won't do that for free. But I was giving them as, at a subsidized rate, you know. They went to the office when um, accessories. They went for events when my accessories. I know one way or the other, it caught people's attention, and then they came to them. Oh, I love your piece. Oh, my brother made it. You know how sisters can. Yes, oh, my brother yeah. made it. Uh, you can. So along the line, I started making business cards so they could give it out to anyone who shows interest in an accessory I made for them. So though bit by bit, the uh, clientele uh, was, you know, growing and. You know, from the good works, you know, good works speak a lot of volume. You know, uh, from people seeing my work on the bride that I made jewelry from, from even everyday people, you get. Wow, wow. So the now, 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 we're still talking about your bids. It still interests me. Now, from the everyday people, you started making those designs. Yeah. Now that you have, you have a large clientele, a whole lot of people, calls everywhere. How do you do it? Are you still the one? making the big stringing them together <laughs> or you have some people let's say um what do you call it in your field for writers we have ghost writers what do you call the uh, <laughs> do, do you have any of such i don't have field? ghost who, i don't have ghost who, who, who will do it but they'll say it's by art smith yeah how do you course, go about of it of course i can't do it alone because you imagine uh having to make about 15 20 necklaces in a week it's not possible for me to do it alone okay. considering the fact that this is not the only work that i do i do other things so i have i employed a uh, youth young people who are interested in this field so i i i, I like, like how many of them are employed? Uh, right now, I have just four. 
four okay and said you know i taught them how to and uh, get them made so i supervise them i also i still do the stringing i still do the designing the designing is all my work okay. but uh, for and the finished product you know is a combined effort but i'm always there supervising make sure, making sure things are done right okay so you are you are an employee of labor yeah I, I, well, this, this is lovely i uh, started out starting out not gaining admission did you finally get admission into the university yeah i, didn't I even did ask. <laughs> yeah i did you did are, yes. are you true now yeah i am what did you study philosophy <laughs> okay so this is serious and philosophy and your okay okay it's still art it's yeah, still art but it definitely you know philosophy has nothing to do with designs it does it does really you know, philosophizing is all about you know uh, using your uh, cognitive abilities and really designing is a cognitive mm. ability if you ask me okay and okay. philosophy okay. is a love of wisdom you mm. understand and wisdom involves uh, work ethics and all that so mm. as a professional i'm a professional now i have to use those work ethics that i've learned from philosophy okay, okay. you understand okay. to be able to okay. advance and to be able to satisfy my customers serve people well and you know just be the best at what i do mm. you understand mm. that's what distinguishes me from uh, the regular artisan who you know who doesn't understand what it takes mm. he gets it okay like the one you have on your hand now for example yeah if we to touch on it what what's it called what would we call it yeah there's uh there's a new line for men you know uh get a, a a client just called me up and said oh my husband has been asking you that he really wants he, he wants to start uh, wearing beats i was like are you kidding me you can't be serious they, uh, so can you just please uh, make some designs you know like samples that i can see something masculine that you know they can see made with be so i said oh no problem so and um, this this is not what uh, this is not crystals It's not what i'll use for a, a necklace okay. um that i'm making for a lady you okay. understand and then this accent is not what uh, is not the regular thing that i'll make for a lady so you know i researched i went on the internet i would started bringing out old uh, august catalogs now and i went to the jury session section i was flipping through the pages trying to find what uh, well, male jury you yes. understand male jury looks it uh, looks like so i started developing myself and i found myself uh, sketching designs and you know at first it didn't look like it but along the line you know it I, flew I, the I, idea you know just to, flew okay that, that that brings me to um Moving on to my close, we're closing up soon enough. But let, let me ask this question having to do with men, because we've been talking about ladies, ladies, yeah. ladies. I mean, is there designs? Do you have designs besides this? Yeah. Designs for men? Can men actually use beads? Is it permi permitted for men, fashion wise now? Yeah, for yeah, men to a, use beads. You know, we have, and there was a time that, uh, you know, a lot of male celebrities were wearing crucifix. I just crucifix, they aren't made with uh, diamonds, they made with gold. Some were made with gold. But most of them, most of them were made with uh, agate stones, precious stones. And those stones, really, basically, they are beads. Okay. You get so okay, it's but very, very specific accurate. type of uh, specific so types. Now, I was okay. I've been hammering on a uh, great, you understand. Okay, so um, most men, most men are beginning to become aware of wearing accessories, okay. you know, apart from the wristwatch and uh, the gold chains, you know, they're beginning to wear variety. Everyone loves variety, they want spice. They don't just want to be seen wearing gold diamonds, wearing and these gold diamonds, they can't repeat it all the mm. time, you know, mm. understand why I mean. Mm. Unless you know the media will just blow it open, that is that the only necklace you have? So they want variety, so they would rather have, um, you know, about 10 of this kind of bracelets than uh, than buy, you know, and uh, just two diamonds because diamond necklaces because that's all they can afford. Okay. And then looking at it for uh, traditional weddings, most in fact, <laughs> maybe 99 percent of uh, Nigerian grooms. The way beats for the traditional way. Okay, that's very the true. That's true. It's that's called Iyo in the Yoruba land. You know, it's the traditional coral necklace. The very everyone, you know, the way it's. Okay. So that's what distinguishes them from the regular man who man, just wear that, that, that. That we have. Once again, thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. But I wouldn't just let you go. I wouldn't let you go. We should wrap up on beats. I mean, that's about it on beats for us. But I, I would like to know if I want to get in touch with you. Anyone wants to get in touch with you? On Twitter and Facebook. Can I just have your Twitter handle? Then okay, Facebook. you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Benga Art Smith, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Benga Art Smith. So. Okay, Benga Art Smith. Yes. The same spelling for Benga G. G B E N G A, then Art Smith. A R C S M I C H. Okay, that's on Twitter. On Facebook again? On Facebook, you can add me up and uh, Benga in quotes Art Smith Dada. Benga in quote Art Smith Dada. Okay, I'd just like to take you, just, just briefly, since you're a fashion journalist. Yeah. 
um, has the experience. For fashion journalists, um, you get you just get a little column in, in a newspaper. That that's what I see, and some couple of pictures, and they say picture speaks. Yeah. Okay. So so I, I would like to know: is it just you just take pictures as a fashion journalist, or you, there's a whole lot of build up to it, write ups? Yeah. I would like to just know. Just give us a. A brief, a brief background. Yeah, just of course. briefly. Uh, when, Within two minutes. When I'm writing about, um, you know, f when when I'm writing as a fashion journalist, I'm not just writing about anything. I research just okay. like a doctor research. Mm. So I go out. I see. I observe latest trends. I watch TVs. I buy magazines. I make sure I'm abreast of the latest trends. And then, you know, I'm I'm going for events, seeing what celebrities wearing what. I'm trying to see what Rita Dominic is wearing. I'm observing our uh, style is evolving, and I'm writing all about that. Then I'm influencing people's dress sense. You know. Uh, people can't just dress anyhow. You can't afford to dress anyhow. Okay, so what, what can a man wear now? What, what would you just? What's in, what's the tr latest trend for a okay, man now? Okay, uh, men are becoming more bold. Men are wearing more colors. More, more men are wearing floral prints. Mom, I, uh, we would have a governor, a very unlikely person who is really repping that trend, and Governor Rita Miyamichi. Okay. For his recent uh, events, for his this recent outings, he has been wearing a lot of floral, floral prints. Floral colors. Yes. Wow. 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 And just for a lady, colors. can you just? Tell me what the ladies are putting on now. I would just like to know that. Uh, well, we'll uh, many ladies that are going for print on print. It's called Clash of Prints. Many clash ladies prints. are, you know, becoming bold. They're becoming, uh, and then they're wearing uh, Maxi skirts. Maxi skirts. Yes. Thank you so much, Wayne Galada, for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you so You're much, Art Smith, once again. Yeah.